Guys, that was a close one. Okay. It should be in Area 51. That'd be cool. If they allow me to go to Area 51, I will go there. Come here. Say hello to the camera. I'm kind of like just woke up. Quick one. Three seconds. Hi, camera. Hello. Goodbye. I'm contaminated now. There's someone that just woke up. All right, let's go clean our equipment and our stretcher after we take our COVID-19 patient, drop them in the emergency room. Now we have to clean up our stretcher. How do we do so? Let's do that next. This portion of the video is about putting on the proper PPE, the proper isolation gear for a patient that we've just been dispatched to that has potential COVID-19 exposure. They just came back from a vacation a week ago. Today they have a fever, they have a dry cough, they're feeling generally very unwell. So our comm center has done some pre-screening. Because of that pre-screening, they're advising us to put our PPE on. Gloves, gowns, masks, goggles, we're doing it all. All right, we have a fresh gown that's taken out of our package. You notice I don't have my gloves on yet. This needs to go on first. So this is a large gown. This gown has to fully cover the torso from the neck area down over the chest, down to the level of the knees. It comes across the wrist and down around through the back. This would be very difficult to do with your gloves on initially. So I advise you not to do that in the first place. Down to my left wrist. Down to my right, up to the level of the neck. And this is where it takes a little art and finesse. Taking this string and this string, the two strings, wrapping one around the back, and coming across to the other side and tying it tightly together. Not before you check to make sure that it's all across my waistline. And this has extended down to the level of my knees. You can also notice that there's a neck string portion. If you have a partner, this is so much easier to help them. They help you out, you help them out. A little more difficult on your own, but not impossible. How are you at tying knots behind your back? The next thing we put on is a mask. So hopefully you've been mask fit tested already. You notice without my gloved hand, I'm holding it by the band here. You have to practice this a few times, but the goal is not to touch any part of the mask with my fingers initially. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring it down. It's catching at the bottom of my chin and I bring the top strap around and place it over the level of the ears. Okay, excellent. Then I take my next strap, bring that around my head and that comes down to the level of my neck. I press firmly this portion in around my nose to create a nice seal. I have not touched any portion of the inside portion of my mask. And now you can take some breaths, because you need to. Feel any leaks coming up through the nose piece, just do some fine adjustments. So I got a bit of a big nose, but this works portion of the video is either using goggles such as this or the face shield which I'll put on as well. You can use both if you want a lot of protection. At least have one of these on. Again, my gloves are not on yet. Okay, and you're gonna find that some of these fog up pretty good. In a few minutes or so, this will start fogging up from the moisture of my exhalation. But the services we work for can provide an anti-fog material for your lenses. Now I have my face shield on. 
And there's an adjustment in the back here to make it fit tightly to your head. And this adjusts up and down. So last but not least, putting my gloves on. All right, I've got my large gloves, placing my hands inside, and then it will go over the yellow part of my gown at the wrist, like so. In some circumstances, they may actually tape around the wrists, but not in the general PPE circumstances for us. But in some serious instances, they may do so. Be safe out there, use safe work practices. I might dress up this way for an intubation. Keep your hands away from your face, limit the amount of contact you make with your fingers, which is very difficult because we love to touch things with our nose. Change these gloves if they become heavily contaminated or if they become torn. Get new ones on. You can see that my mask is starting to fog up. Another thing they don't tell you until you experience it yourself, when you start really working, lifting a patient from one location to the next, you can get short of breath because this mask limits the amount of air you can get in and out of your lungs. So be careful of that, be cognizant, and adjust your level of activity accordingly. First thing we remove when we get to the patient door is our gloves. So we're going to imagine my gloves are super contaminated. Get one glove out like this and use your contaminated surface and grab it from the outside portion of my glove and begin to peel it off carefully and gently. Okay. Use my clean hand and go to the inside portion of my glove and then nip it near the palmer surface and then again peel bringing the first contaminated glove inside the one you just peeled out and it kind of goes inside of each other all right now throw it in the biohazard bag right beside the door of your patient room get this goggles and face shield off. I love removing the part off of my head. It's quite comforting. So we don't touch any of this portion of my face shield. I can anchor it up on these knobs here and then remove it with the back strap. Gone. So we don't throw this out. We need to decontaminate that after. We'll show you how to do that. You notice I'm taking my goggles off by the strap as well. Gone. Not my mask yet. We're gonna remove my gown. And I've just contaminated my fingers. Crap. So we're gonna unfasten our ties in the back. Hopefully you made a bow. Material's not that strong. You can gently tear it off anyway. Unfasten the tie in your back. That's done. Now we pull it away from the neck and shoulders, touching the inside portion of the gown only. And we're turning the gown inside out on each other. So I'm folding it, I'm rolling it as I go, touching the inside portions into a nice ball into the biohazard. This you must not touch everywhere around here. Do not touch this. What you need to do is come behind your neck, grab the bottom strap, the elastic band, peel it over your head ever so gently. Don't touch anything here in front. Grab the second one, gently take it off your nose and make sure it gets into the biohazard bag. 
Now look at my pretty face. Nice and red, inflamed, post patient. Imagine having this on for 20 minutes to an hour at a time. All right guys, we showed you the videos up next about hand hygiene, when to do it, when you should be doing it, when you should use alcohol, when you should use soap and water on your hands. Next, let's do it, let's check it out. So number one, we do this before we touch the patient in the multiple places that we'll touch them. Anytime we do a procedure, wash your hands before you put your gloves on. So procedures such as IV, etc., or maybe putting in a urinary cath bag or uh, changing out the reservoir bag, wash your hands before and after. Anytime you touch a patient, you must wash your hands as well. So we're at one, two, three, four occasions we need to wash the hands. And anytime you even enter that patient room and touch anything that is in there, guaranteed you're going to touch something. It's a must do. No exceptions to the rules. Plus, plus, plus hand washing. We're going to show you how to do that next, either through warm soap and water or using an alcohol solution. Do you know how to use these hand sanitizers? Well, let's show you. We're going to apply a palmful of this foaming hand sanitizer. Fill up our palm. All right, adequately full. Cupped hand covering all of our surfaces and we're rubbing our hands palm to palm initially. Then our right palm over our left one and interlacing our fingers as we rub back and forth. And then we can grip our fingers like this, back and forth, interlaced and imposing, rubbing our thumbs together, and vice versa. Circular motions. 20 or 30 seconds and letting our palms dry like that. That's it. Let's see if you can do hand washing next. Well, let's go through this. This is a skill, super important. We don't want to infect ourselves or our patients when we go see them and take care of them through procedures or treatments. So initially wet our hands with some water, lukewarm. Depending on what type of device you get soap from, apply enough soap to cover all your hand surface. All right, your palm or surface, the back of your hand. All right, Got enough soap on. What do we do next? Well, we rub our hands palm to palm in our circular motion. Right palm over left, interlacing our fingers, and vice versa. Our fingers opposing each other in this position, and going back and forth. Rotating down to our thumb area, and then again, vice versa. Occasionally rubbing backwards and forwards and across the fingers once again. And then rinsing with water. This takes like 30, 45 seconds to do this appropriately. All right. Rinsing our hands with water. And continue to rinse them. The water was a little too warm there. Okay, we leave the water running at this point. We get a paper towel from the dispenser, unlike having a towel here at home. Dry them thoroughly. This is an important part of this. And then we use the towel or the paper towel to turn off our tap so we don't recontaminate our hand. And then we 
we let them air dry. And that's it, guys. Do something else. All right, everybody. We're in the bay of our hospital, and we have to have a serious chat, okay? What we need to chat about is our stretcher. And what we need to do is clean it thoroughly because oftentimes we are not doing a great job of it. So I'm gonna show you our stretcher, show you areas where dirt accumulates and you gotta get in there with the proper wipes and sanitation equipment so we can go get our next patient safely without spreading contaminants towards them. This is a big responsibility and I don't want you getting blamed for making another patient sick. Got it? Cool. Let's clean our stretcher. So right here is an example of sandy cloths, which is a germicidal disposable cloth. This is what we're gonna be used to clean our stretcher, the straps and all the connections. Some services use products that are quite stronger than this. So follow any policies and procedures that you have in place with your local service. Can you see contaminants? This is some blood. This is dandruff or skin cells off of your patient. We got everything from road contaminants, dust and soil, microbes, viruses, biological material. We have to clean all of this, especially areas that we touch frequently. Our handles, places that we grip. We got an example of a handle again, needs to be clean properly all of this area and then we got our straps look at this strap connection can you see the dirt accumulating in these areas I don't know what that is might be part of brain matter or blood everything is let's grab some wipes and get this clean next start with our straps here I've got brand new sandy wipes clean them up and then let them hang off to the side which is clean all right, let's get deep into that buckle. Shine that up, got all the contaminants away from it. And then we can get the straps themselves. Lift this buckle up now and then clean it on both sides and let it hang down to air dry. All right, so we do that with each of our straps. Let's do it. Now that our straps are clean, we can clean the surface of our stretcher. All right, circular motions. We can start small and big, just like what we do on the human body before we do IV placements and such. Spread the contaminants off towards the edge. All right, look how disgusting our wipe is. Chuck that into a biohazard container. Chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. That is sparkling clean. Let it air dry. Let's move on to other portions of the stretcher next. Remember what I said about these handles? I got fresh wipes. Anywhere I touch in particular must be thoroughly cleaned and wiped down. Let's take a black light to this thing. I want to see no contaminants whatsoever. If someone wants to swab this, I want the results to be negative for any biological type material. All handles are being wiped down, super clean. Now we can put new linens on our stretcher because we dumped ours into a biohazard area early. All right, all done, squeaky clean. 